appreciate you, Roger. I, I want to say this uh, before I get started. Uh, I'll tell you all right now, I was ready to preach when I come in the door this evening. I preached half the way over here. Uh, uh, I wanted to. I'll be mean, right honest with you. I asked the Lord to come in. I said, can I come in the door preaching? He said, no. Uh, <laughs> The only reason is because I know I couldn't have got through it. Uh, uh, Y'all wouldn't have understood one little word of it. But I, I'm full and I am thankful for what he's done. I'm, uh, I'm thankful. Uh, he's just been so good to me. I, uh, uh, I'm not to uh, uh, try to ramble on too long. I, uh, I've been thinking for the last several weeks. Uh, I understand now uh, uh, something that I used to hear Clarence say all the time. I haven't heard him say it in a while. But, but he used to always say uh, uh, as a pastor, uh, he didn't have to. to, to uh, and we always don't take this the wrong way. We always do desire uh, to see someone saved. Uh, and as a Christian, that should always be our desire uh, to see somebody get saved. But as a, as a pastor, he doesn't have to see someone get saved to be blessed. Uh, seeing someone grow uh, and grow closer to the Lord uh, 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 is a blessing. Uh, and I've been thinking ever since the revival, Roy, I want to give you a rose. Uh, I noticed in the revival, uh, every night you would stay uh, and wanted to uh, uh, stay with the singers and help them pack up. Uh, and I've just noticed little things ever since then. The Lord's been revealing. Uh, I believe you got a desire for the Lord. Uh, and I can see that growth. Uh, keep on growing for the Lord. Uh, desire that. Uh, now I know we're blessed as he's blessed tonight. Uh, Pour your testimony and bless me tonight. But I appreciate it. Turn with us tonight in 1 Kings chapter 19. We'll be in uh, 19. Uh, I thought we'd read 1 through 12, but I think we'll, we'll uh, cut her short and skip down to about verse 9. What chapter did you say? 1 Kings 19. sinuses the last uh, last couple days. I'm over the cold, but uh, it has an effect, so I wanted to have my whistle wet before I got started. Oh, no, I, I only took a drink. I just wanted to I needed it then. Anyway, starting in verse... No, go ahead and read it all. Okay, we're going to read it all. Starting in verse 1. You good, Miss Lillian? Okay, sorry about that. And they had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water in his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights, unto the whole realm of the man of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth. And stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. And break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still small voice. You may be seated tonight. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you this evening for what you've done. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of being in your house. 
tonight, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for how you visited with us, Lord. Lord, I, I just don't want to fail to thank you tonight, Lord. I feel so blessed, uh, Lord. If, if nobody else uh, is blessed tonight, Lord, you blessed me enough, Lord. I, I just thank you, Lord. I, I desire more than someone else, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, I, I don't even know, uh, if, if I, for lack of a better term, I know you can take a message and apply it to a heart. Uh, but, Lord, uh, I don't know the need on anybody else's heart, but, Lord, I sure need it this evening. Uh, and, Lord, so we don't help nobody else. Lord, I just want to thank you for helping me. And Lord, I pray, Lord, I know, Lord, it's not just for one of us, Lord, but Lord, I'm thankful, Lord. Oh, Lord, as Steve has said so many times, he has that shirt, Lord, Jesus loves you, but he loves me more. No, I know he don't love nobody more than nobody else. Oh, but Lord, I'm thankful for those times that you come and you sit down beside us. And Lord, if people just like it, they can reach out and touch it. And Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I pray you give us the wisdom and the words to get through what you'd have us to get through tonight. Lord, we speak now what you'd have us to speak and keep quiet now what you'd have us to keep quiet. Lord, we just desire Jesus tonight, Lord. Lord, our desires are towards you. Our delight is in you. And Lord, I pray that you'd have your way in the reign of this service. Lord, I love you. To the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all got to hear me. I can't see. <laughs> Taking a message to the out of verse 11 and 12, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. Amen. I'm thankful for when the Lord passes by. But that's not where we're going tonight. It's in a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. The Lord showed me something about this the other day that, that I'd never noticed before. Uh, that I'd, I'd read this wrong uh, uh, every time, I guess. Uh, I've always read this uh, uh, as being a little bit different than, than the events that actually took place. Uh, uh, in verse 11, uh, uh, there it says, uh, And the Lord passed by. Uh, so as I, as I read down through the things that occurred uh, with the rocks getting ripped uh, and, the, and the fire and the earthquake, uh, I always read that. Uh, as being the Lord, uh, uh, those things going before the Lord uh, as being, being the Lord's doings. Uh, 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 because it said that He passed by. Uh, and I always just read that kind of, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, as, as Him giving Elijah a little test there uh, to see that uh, if, if He could recognize what, what the Lord's voice was in or not, uh, to see if He could recognize uh, the instructions that He was receiving from the Lord. Uh, but that is not what is going on here. It clearly says, but the Lord was not in the wind. Amen. The Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the fire in verse 12. In each of those things, though the Lord was present, the Lord was not in those things. What am I getting at tonight? In a crowd, in society, as a whole, in our own mind, the voice of the Lord is almost never the loudest voice. The voice of the Lord is not is almost never uh, the loudest or the most boisterous uh, or the one uh, that stands out uh, the most uh, as being something that, 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 that just calls you to look at it. Uh, oh, uh, we must be at a point though spiritually. We are close enough to hear that still small voice. Well, we know uh, uh, that, that's not where we're going. That's the, the, the obvious thing that we usually talk about. Uh, but, but that's not where we're going tonight. Because uh, we know uh, that Elijah spiritually was at the point that he could hear a still small voice. Uh, but we know, uh, and we look back uh, just a chapter, uh, what Jezebel that we read about uh, is so mad about uh, is that uh, Elijah has just, uh, with a 16 second prayer, uh, as Clarence always said, uh, has just called down fire uh, by the Lord from heaven. And destroyed and slain the prophets of Baal. We know that Elijah is in tune with the Lord. He's just met with an angel that's fed him and gave him water because he needed it. He needed some help for the journey. So we know spiritually that Elijah's right. But there was something else he still had to do to be able to hear the still small voice. He had to cut through the distractions. He had to cut through uh, uh, those things uh, that though the Lord was present, uh, uh, though the Lord was present, they were not of the Lord. Uh, they were not the Lord's doing. Uh, they were placed there uh, to keep His eyes and to get His mind off of what the Lord was saying. Well, we 
going to preach on tonight for, for just a few minutes will not be long. Uh, it's cutting through distraction. Cutting through distraction. Uh, uh, and I, I started to say it earlier, if there's ever a time of year that we must cut through distraction, it is now at the Christmas season. Uh, you say, preacher, well, well, what are you talking about? Uh, this is the one time of year uh, where, the, where the name of Christ uh, is present in almost every house across America. Uh, all over the world, uh, people are recognizing uh, the name of Christ. Uh, every time uh, uh, that someone says Christmas, uh, you can't say it without Christ. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, uh, as Paul said, uh, uh, I've heard Clarence say many times uh, in Philippians 1.18, uh, he said, What then? Notwithstanding, uh, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So I'm thankful for that. But let me remind you there in verse 11, as we said, that God came on the scene before all the distraction. God was present there. It said, and I'll get it right here, He said, Go forth and stand upon the out before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. That's the first thing that happened. The Lord was present. And yet, all those distractions were still there. He was present. His name was present. Despite not being in the, the fire or the earthquake or the wind, He was present. So that His name being present is not enough. His name being present is not enough. I'm thankful. Oh, I'm thankful that the name, the name of Christ is in, is in, every, in every home, is it mentioned uh, uh, all over TV uh, 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 throughout this time of year. Uh, oh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, but there is so much that distracts us from Him. In all the hustle and the bustle and all the other things uh, uh, that we associate with Christmas, uh, and I don't take this the wrong way at all, I love them things. Uh, I love Christmas lights. Uh, I love putting up a Christmas tree. Uh, uh, I've got a tree I uh, put up in my yard every year uh, uh, that I used to put up with, uh, when I was a boy with a football every, every year, and he's gone home to be with the Lord now. Uh, so I love to put that up uh, and think about him every year. It blesses me. I'm excited to do that. Uh, oh, I love, uh, I'm the biggest frosty, the snowman, man, you ever going to meet. But Jesus don't care if I got a Christmas tree up or not. I'll tell y'all, this evening, uh, that's why I said there was no good reason for it. And I was feeling so overwhelmed this evening over everything I needed to do. I don't have a tree up yet. I don't have no outside lights up yet. Still got other stuff I need to do. I was supposed to go to Louisville uh, uh, for work on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, uh, had, had plays and stuff coming up uh, uh, and things. Uh, and I was just feeling so overwhelmed. But Jesus don't care if I made a single cookie. It don't matter to Him if there's a light on a tree. Oh, but it does matter. If we recognize the birth of the Son of God. Amen. It does matter uh, if in our hearts we worship uh, uh, because Jesus Christ uh, came and uh, born of a virgin, a uh, uh, perfect Lamb of God. Uh, that John the Baptist would say uh, when he saw him come walking down the hill, uh, Behold, uh, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. It does matter uh, uh, if we recognize uh, oh, uh, that there was one to come before him, uh, the forerunner coming in the spirit of power of Elijah. Uh, when Mary went to visit uh, with his mom Elizabeth, all oh, that he left in the womb, uh, for he knew that his Savior had come. He, uh, he don't care if he bought a gift for everybody on your list or not. But he does care if we recognize him. Amen. He does care if the name of Jesus is not just said in Christmas, but is spoken in our hearts. Is praised in our home. If the light of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, amen, if the Christmas lights in our yard uh, are brighter than the light of Jesus Christ in our life, uh, oh, then we have made an awful mistake. I don't, know, I don't take it. Please don't take that the wrong way. I'll have the brightest LEDs I can find. Amen. I love that stuff. I told you. 
But it's got to be about Jesus. Preaching on, cutting through the distraction. The loudest voice says, bye, bye, bye. Hey man, I love to get people gifts. I have fun with it. I enjoy it. Oh, but the still small voice says, I already paid the price. The loud voice of uh, every commercial you see uh, will say, if you love somebody, uh, oh, you better get them this tiny thing. Uh, you better get them this. Uh, oh, but Jesus Christ uh, said, I love you enough. Uh, I paid the price uh, with my own blood. It said in Isaiah, surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did have seen his stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Moving very quickly, uh, in Matthew chapter 2, uh, uh, I uh, started to read, read, read the first part of it earlier, but we got to Matthew 2, uh, we read uh, about the wise men uh, uh, coming in from the east, uh, and in verse 2 it says, saying, uh, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. I'll tell you what they weren't looking for. They weren't looking for a barn. They weren't looking for a staple. They weren't looking for a... Uh, and, and, and I don't know, and I certainly won't argue over it, but likely they weren't still at the stable when they, they got the best pain, okay? Yeah. Don't, but I don't worry about that. I don't get caught up in such things. Whether it was or wasn't, it won't make no difference. But they weren't looking for a modest home with a poor family. We know uh, uh, the Mary and Joseph were poor uh, uh, because we read uh, uh, as they brought Jesus, I believe it's in Luke chapter 3, uh, or maybe it's 2, uh, into the temple uh, uh, in accordance with the law. Uh, uh, they didn't bring uh, a lamb. They brought, uh, they brought the poor, uh, the sacrifice for a family uh, who couldn't afford a lamb uh, uh, for the birth of the man. They brought the two, uh, the two birds. So it was a poor family. They weren't looking for that. They said... We're looking for he that's born king. So they went to where they thought a king ought to be. They went to the palace in Jerusalem with Herod. They were distracted by man's expectations. Why do I say that? Well, because it says in verse 2, For we have seen his star in the east. And then I'm going to read down... Uh, Leave. Let me get the right verse here. Uh, verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before him, them till it came and stood over where the young child was. They followed the same star to begin with. And it wouldn't let them the whole way to Jesus. He, the, the star wasn't confused. The Lord wasn't confused where his son was. He, he didn't lead them to go talk to Herod. Oh, they got distracted by the expectations of man. But they got past the distraction. As we have to cut through the distraction, or to get to the blessing, they had to cut through the distraction of what they'd expect. And so when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened his treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. To get to the blessing, they had to cut through the distraction. To get to meet with the king, amen, to get to meet through with the king, we have to cut through the distraction. Uh, moving very quick, quickly, uh, uh, I, I thought about uh, uh, the, 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 the voice of man, uh, the voice of man, everything uh, uh, that we would think of uh, would say, go to the palace. Uh, all we want to think about uh, as we go down through Christ's life, uh, uh, we read about uh, his triumphant infantry, as we call it. But uh, 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 really, uh, uh, if you compare that with what you'd expect of a king, uh, it doesn't look triumphant. Uh, uh, as he goes uh, into Jerusalem, the only time uh, that he would allow himself to be lifted up, uh, uh, as he goes into Jerusalem, uh, they're laying down the palms, uh, and they're laying down uh, uh, their clothes, uh, and they're screaming, Hosanna! Coming in to receive his kingship. But he doesn't come in with a chariot or an army or the riches or the spoils of war. He comes in as a poor man. 
Said, no, a donkey borrowed it. Man's voice. It's hard to see if you don't look for the voice of God in that. If you don't look for the hand of God in that, you don't see the king coming in. Not many days later, we look on and we see a crowd gathered. A mob outside the temple. Crucify him! Give us Barabbas! It's hard to see if you don't, you don't know. No one there can see the hand of God. It's not the loud hand. It's not the one that appears to be in control. But oh, we know as Jesus prayed the night that night. Oh, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Slain from the foundation of the world. Oh, we can look and we can see the hand of God all over. And then not long later, we see a man hanging on a cross, dying, and we see loud voices all around. So many mock him and say, you said you were the Son of God. Come down. One hang on a cross beside him, probably louder than me. I'm sure louder than he is. You said you were the Son of God. Save yourself. We see another one uh, beside him begging for forgiveness. And we see uh, uh, those uh, off in the distance, his mother and others, uh, uh, crying and weeping and wailing. Uh, it's a loud scene. Uh, oh, but uh, somewhere uh, in the middle. There's a still small voice. It says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Let us pray, Lord, and let I thank you for that still small voice. And Lord, I thank you. Pray you bless us this evening. Lord, I thank you for coming. I thank you for what you've done. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that we as a people would cut through the distraction. Lord, that we not be distracted uh, by the things of the world. Lord, I want to enjoy the things. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we desire to enjoy the things uh, of the season and all that. But Lord, I pray to be about Jesus. And Lord, I pray you take these few words of to our hearts, Lord. Help us to draw nigh to you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you.